briefly, I don't know if I forgot if I introduced myself. My name is Michael Nolte, and I'm the program director of this event uh, and I'm the uh, master of ceremonies. Uh, and now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Charles McNulty, who's not related to me, but we sort of have the same last name. Sort of. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. I'm going to try to use, not use the microphone. Can everyone hear me okay? Great. My name, uh, if you use the hand of a recording. So okay. My name is Charles McNulty. I'm an outreach coordinator with the San Francisco Department of Elections, and I'm here today to speak to you very briefly about ranked choice voting. Uh, some of you might be familiar with it, and we're going to use it this uh, November to elect uh, three citywide offices here in San Francisco. Before I start on ranked choice voting, I just want to mention three important dates as they relate to the upcoming November 6th election. The first date is October 9th, and that's the first day that you can vote early down at City Hall. And the second date is October 22nd. That's the last day to register or be registered to vote. And thirdly, the last uh, date is October 30th, and that is the last day for someone to request uh, an absentee ballot be mailed at them, uh, mailed to them, excuse me. So um, that said, ranked choice voting. Some of you might remember ranked choice voting was passed as an amendment to the city charter back in March of 2002. And what ranked choice voting does, it allows San Francisco voters to rank up to three candidates for the same office. And here in San Francisco, we use ranked choice voting to elect most local officials. And for this upcoming November 6th election, as I mentioned before, we're going to use it for three citywide offices, the mayor, the sheriff, uh, and the district attorney. Now, I brought today here a sample of the ranked choice ballot. Don't worry, this is not the actual size of the ballot we use here in San Francisco. This is just for demonstration purposes only. Now, the ranked choice voting ballot list all the names of the candidates in three repeating columns. Now what this allows you to do is pick a first choice candidate in the first column, a different second choice candidate in the second column, and a different third choice candidate in the third column. Now you do that by completing the arrow pointing to your choice. Now, voters wishing to vote for a qualified write-in candidate for any of their three choices can do so. They just need to write the name of the qualified write-in candidate and complete the arrow pointing to their choice. A couple things to keep in mind when marking the ranked choice ballot. You may, but you are not required to rank three choices. If there are less than three choices or to rank fewer than three choices, just leave any of the remaining columns blank. Now this will have some implications with the sheriff's contest and the contest for district attorney where there's less than three candidates running. Also, something to keep in mind, uh, that your second choice is counted only after your first choice is eliminated, and your third choice candidate is counted only if your first and second choice candidates are eliminated. Now I've talked about how to mark the ballot, I just want to touch briefly on how the process works. With ranked choice voting, all first choice selections are counted first. If any candidate has a majority of the first choice selections, he or she will be declared the winner. Now if no candidate has a majority of those first choice selections, the candidate with the fewest number of first choice rankings or selections is eliminated. Anybody who picked that eliminated candidate as their first choice will then have their vote transferred to their second choice. The votes are then recounted, and this time you'll see some people's first choice is being counted, some people's third choice is being counted. If at that point any candidate has a majority of the remaining votes, he or she will be declared the winner. Now if no candidate has a majority, that process of eliminating <coughs> candidates and transferring votes is repeated. Now I encourage folks, if they have, a, I'll have a few moments to answer some questions, if they have any questions. Um, does anybody have any questions about ranked choice voting and and how it works? Uh, yes. Uh, at 8 o'clock or after 8 o'clock on the election night, the uh, you just count the first choice voice, right? Right. And from two, time to time, probably at 9.30 or 10.30, you put out another bulletin, right? So, you know, certain candidates got so many. But you are not counting the second choice vote, are you? 
I'm talking about the first night. Right. Uh, the so on election night, uh, after 8 p.m., uh, the Department of Elections will release preliminary results from absentee ballots that we've received prior to election day. And then shortly thereafter, as the, as the, uh, the results come in from the precincts, we will update that information. But yes, we will only have uh, information on the first choice votes cast uh, on election night. And then the Department of Elections intends to have preliminary ranked choice voting results available uh, beginning uh, Friday at 4 o'clock, like we've done in the past. Other questions? I just want to make sure that the uh, steps the right. Now, during the first round, we have only the first choice. And the one with the least first choice we eliminated completely. It means he's not, he or she is not going to retire in the second or third choice, right? That's yes and no. We will only eliminate a candidate with the fewest number of first choice rankings if no candidate has a majority. <coughs> so if a candidate already has a majority after the, after the counting of the first choice rankings, there's no need to eliminate a candidate. No, he can't, but, no, but in, in case not. nobody has a majority, we eliminate the candidate with the fewest number of first choice rankings only. Out completely. Out completely. Yes? Can you explain the phenomenon of exhausted ballots and uh, the of that are? So uh, the question is about exhausted ballots. So basically, what an exhausted ballot is, is if we have a ballot that can no longer go or be transferred to any of the remaining candidates. So, for example, the easy way to describe an exhausted ballot is if you rank only one candidate and your candidate is eliminated, your ballot is exhausted and won't go on to counting toward the final majority of votes. Is that? Yeah. Other questions? Doesn't that, in effect, disenfranchise someone that voted? You know, I, I can't speak to disenfranchisement. I can only speak to how the process works. And so, I, I, if, if someone only picks one, one candidate and their ballot is eliminated, that's, that's how the process is uh, designed and that's how it works. So, whether or not you think it disenfranchises a candidate or not, that's, that's an interpretation. That's up to them. It's a free choice to not vote in that. You have a losing candidate. So, it's possible that a third choice could, uh, could come in. You know, it's hard for me to speculate what might or might not happen, but... but I mean, under the system, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Sure. Other questions? Yes? Does that mean, Mr. Cooper, can you vote for, say, just one candidate? Yes. And either the one your vote not Your vote will not count to the final majority if your candidate is eliminated and you only pick one candidate. <laughs> If you put your candidate, the question is, can you put your candidate three times? You can, but your vote for that candidate counts only once. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you have an idea about how many people don't rank choice votes in the last election or something? Do you know? Not off the top of my head. You could, you could look at some of the statement of votes and see um, where, well, I don't know the answer to that question. And if you want, I can talk to you later and then I'll answer. I think it's yeah, I think it's important to see what you're doing. Right. I, I can, if I can't give you the answer, I can talk to you and direct you where you might be able to go. Other questions? Yeah, the fine short con or short book, a long con, a long or over book. I, I'm not sure in terms of long count and short count. I agree at these terms. Uh, being used. Well, there's there's two terms that might be used as, as like a, an undervote right. under or an overvote. Over yes. So an overvote would be if I picked uh, my first choice, so I've got Eleanor, Caesar, Walter, John Hancock, Martin Luther King, and Anna May. If I, if I picked Eleanor and Caesar Chavez, I've overvoted my ballot and it won't count because I can't, we can't make a determination of who you really wanted to choose. Okay? What? What if I make the second choice, and second choice is only one question, will you pick up my, count my second choice? If you overvote your first choice, we can't count any of your ballot. If you overvote your second choice, we can only count your first choice. If you overvote your third, <coughs> we can count your first and second. Does that make sense? So if you overvote your first choice, that's it. Because we can't, we can't make a determination of who you intended to vote for. We're not, we're not in the business of interpreting ballots. What happens if you don't make a first choice but you do make a second choice? It depends. Uh, because we won't look at your first choice or look at your second choice 
uh, unless there's a, a candidate eliminated, or you're, 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 so the way it works is, if you don't vote a first choice, and no candidate is eliminated because someone got a winning majority, we don't look at your second choice. But if you start counting second choices, then we will look at it. Excuse me, mm -hmm. did you use this system in the last election? We did. We used it to elect supervisors in the even districts. This will be the fourth time we used it, the first time for these three citywide offices. The cycle will be complete. Any more? First time in the mayor's First time in the mayor's, the sheriff, and the district attorney. Um, there was a question about the history of ranked choice voting. Uh, basically, it was put on by the Board of Supervisors, and the board, uh, the voters approved it, uh, Charter A, back in March of 2002. Uh, and that's what, uh, and then uh, there we were trying to, it was supposed to be implemented originally in 2000, uh, Two in the November contest for mayor, sheriff, and district attorney, but we didn't have a, a system certified to use ranked choice voting. So the first time we used it was for the members of the board of supervisors for the odd districts in District Two. Well, say, say that again. Uh, basically, one of the things that ranked choice voting does is it eliminates runoff elections. So there's no longer in San Francisco we have runoff elections. We have one election for the citywide offices here. When will the absentee ballots be uh, sent to us? We start mailing absentee ballots beginning 29 days before the election, so in October. Great, well thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to all of you today. Uh, if you have further questions, uh, I encourage you to visit our website at www.sfgov.org forward slash elections, or certainly give us a call at 415-554. Uh, four, four, three, nine, four, three, seven, five. Great. Thank you very much.